Pearson. Put through by Greenoff. Jones is after him. Pearson shot go. And welcome again to the big match. Today on the programme, this is the lineup for you. Our main match is the top game in the second division as Tottenham take on Brighton and Hove Albion. We back that up by first division action from Manchester United and Norwich City and those fourth division pace setters, Southend United and Watford. But what else? Well, talk about Crazy Corner. What about the Azania events at Tottenham yesterday when they put up the number 10 sign but pulled off the wrong man? And the Spurs manager, Keith Burkachaw, will be explaining how that all happened to him. We come to Crazy Corner proper, and you're going to see an amazing incident from the Dutch First Division. I wonder if you notice anything odd about the picture that's coming up now. One goalkeeper in between the posts, of course, but look, the arrow showing where the other one is as that free kick is about to be taken. And when the action moves, you're in for a treat. But first, we catch up on the battle at the top of the Second Division as Spurs take on Brighton at White Hart Lane in front of nearly 49,000 fans. The biggest of the season in the second division, and Tottenham's biggest for more than two years. It's a buoyant crowd at White Hart Lane, and so different from those desperate months of last season when Spurs were on their way out of the first division and into the second. The crowd drawn by two successful teams and the hint of goals in the air, with Peter Ward of Brighton, who has ten to his name on one side, and on the other, John Duncan of Spurs, also scorer of ten goals this season so far. As Spurs field this side, unbeaten at home in the league, 17 goals in their last three home games, are now second in the table. Ian Moores forced his way into the side a month ago and has justified himself. Keith Osgood gets his second game after injury. As for Brighton, they give a first chance to Paul Clark, only 19, an England Youth International signed this week from South End. Winger Eric Potts had a fitness test this morning. There must have been a doubt about it. He is the sub, and Tony Towner is at number seven. Brighton at this moment, lying third in the table. Well, here is Paul Clark, his first appearance for Brighton, straight out of the fourth division. Could be quite an ordeal for him. Not that coming out of the fourth division worried Tottenham's Colin Lee a few weeks back when he arrived from Torquay. He scored four against Bristol Rovers in his first game. He's the Spurs sub today. Referee today is Clive Thomas from Wales. And in the director's box, a familiar face at White Hart Lane. There he is chewing away on the left in the spectacles. A player who served here with great distinction, of course. Now manager of Brighton Hove Albion, Alan Mullery. So there we go. Spurs in white attacking the goal to our left. Brighton Hove Albion in shirts of dark blue, white shorts, red stockings. A blustery win which won't help when the ball is in the air. And a game with an awful lot at stake. McNabb to Holmes for Tottenham. A little touchdown. And Eric Steele out there didn't really get to it and it had to be turned behind by Gary Williams, number three. Well, that was a bit of a fright for Brighton there. So Tottenham's corner, Terry Naylor with it, and that's Steele's ball. Brighton bought him from Peterborough. Perryman keeping a close watch on Ward there, as you saw. got the legs to get past Williams well it was Lawrenson who got there first and Steele had to come out quickly Catlin Reasonless about Tottenham uh, when Dane's got the ball there. I didn't see once or twice already in this game. Quickly released it, got the game going again, got men moving forward again. Mark Lawrenson to Gary uh, Williams. And here's Towner. 
Tremendous run by Towner. Now can he shrug off Perryman as well? Now can he get it over? Well, that was the only thing that was missing. Was the good cross at the end of a tremendous run there by Tony Towner. So Brighton's corner. And it's uh, number five. Graham Wynn Stanley right up there in that uh, Spurs penalty area. Towner with the corner. And Moore's got it away. Williams turning it back again. Oh, a miss kick there by Naylor. It'll be another corner for Brighton. So Graham and Stanley. Right in there. And number 10 for Clark. Corner Kane coming in for Brighton, and a good fist away there by Barry Danes. Got a good uh, bit of distance on that one. Williams and the linesman flagging on this side for an offside against Tony Towner. safely judging that one and a Tottenham throw Hollow trying to get in behind them Peter O'Sullivan there doing a good gritty job at the back for Brighton he might be in a bit of trouble yet and I think he wanted Steele to come towards him and Steele wasn't going to leave his line and in the end the little Brighton number 11 had to whack it behind for the corner corner Ian Moores is deep and Osgood is also uh, deep and they played it wide here for McNabb now can he get to the byline and pull it back yes but only as far as Catlin here's Towner the long ball forward only Peter Ward is up for Brighton skill oh a lovely touch by Peter Ward and now Towner can take it up again here's Clark screening it wide here for Horton and Catlin joining in a lovely move by Brighton there and so it's a throw actually it was that lovely piece of skill there by uh, Peter Ward that really opened up the way for so many things Sullivan Horton chipped forward to Miller Osgood slipped there for a moment here's Peter Ward nice little ball played very intelligently there for Towner played back this time for O'Sullivan Towner again they want that cross in though They'll try and take Naylor played short in fact to O'Sullivan but charged out by Perryman and now here's Peter Taylor Lawrenson's ball into the crowd. Now, Hoddle. Duncan. Hoddle going through. Moores. And Duncan with the shot. Oh, he hit the post. The first real shot on target of the game. And when it came through to Duncan, he seemed to size it up so well, and he put it carefully wide of Eric Steele. And it was always going to hit the post, would it go in or go out? And unluckily for Spurs, it stayed out. Steele catching that one. Really has got a nose for goals, says John Duncan. And that was so close to being uh, number 11 of the season for him. Taylor, Hoddle, Taylor again, nice play again by Tottenham, here's Duncan, oh good play there by Duncan for John Pratt, across the face of that Brighton goal. 
touch by Duncan. Pratt was well positioned to take it on his shot. He'd have been a bit disappointed with that, though. Clark for Brighton. That's not a bad ball played for Peter Ward. Oh, my word, it looked for a moment as though he was half pulled back there by Terry Naylor. Just put him fractionally off balance. That was a lovely ball and the first time really we've seen Peter Ward in full stride getting towards the penalty area. Osgood. Hoddle. McNabb. Brighton have pulled a lot back. Naylor playing it through there. Taylor! Oh, my word, that was so close. Well, applause all around the ground for that. In fact, it was Terry Naylor who popped up from nowhere, deep in the heart of that Brighton defence. A little touch there for Peter Taylor. Looked as though it was going in, but uh, just wide of the Brighton goal. Here's Ward. A touch on for Clark. Miller wide outside him. Kathleen coming up in support. Now, let it go. That wasn't far off. And that's the nearest Brighton have been. And it was 19-year-old Paul Clark who got in the shot. Holmes. Cut out again, though, by Lawrenson. Miller. Carefully picking his way through there and finding uh, Peter O'Sullivan. Here's Tony Towner. Lawrenson again. The Public of Ireland International, Mark Lawrenson. Well, this is the first time he's come forward like that. Miller's right in there trying to get the one-two going with him. And now Perryman, no, he hasn't saved the corner. That's a corner for Brighton in the last seconds of the first half. Graham Winstanley, the big number five, is coming up. Lawrenson's already up there because it was he who did so much to force that corner. So there's Winstanley, five. Lawrence and six you saw there, Meller nine, all six footers, and here's the corner coming in, and a good safe catch by Barry Davis. That's half time as well. Disappointing first half really, just uh, one really clear opening when everybody thought a goal was on the way. That was when John Duncan was able to take aim, but hit the post instead of the net. But let's hope the second half's. Uh, a good deal better than that. A half-time score then at uh, White Hart Lane between these two sides, so close to the top of the second division. Spurs nil, Brighton nil, and we'll be back with the second half. back to White Hart Lane just as Brighton and Hove Albion now kick off they remember are attacking the goal to our left in the dark shirts goal this first half and a disappointing one but a big crowd here wanting some entertainment and really getting behind their teams Peter Ward had a fairly anonymous first half did Peter that's a nice touch by Duncan if McNabb can come up onto it John Pratt the long ball forward Will that catch on the win? Will it cause problems for Steele? No, it won't. In fairness to the players, the win really has been very difficult indeed. Turner. A 
throw to Tottenham. Moores. Oh, Taylor. Is this the moment? Oh, what a lovely curler! A Peter Taylor special, that, because he thought about it and felt the only way round that crowded area was with a curler which looked as though it was going to go just sneaking in by that far post as uh, Eric Steele went diving across the goal, but it went just wide again. Horton with the throw for Brighton. There's Catlin's cross and Naylor's header away to Peter Taylor. Good challenge though by Williams and good work by Hoddle. In fact it was beautiful work by Hoddle. A lovely pass there for Peter Taylor. But charged down by Win Stanley. McNabb couldn't gather up the uh, crumb that was falling his way Jimmy Holmes can here's Neil McNabb Spurs now pushed a lot of men forward curled in there Horton behind for the Tottenham corner but what is worth looking again of course is that superb ball and control by Glenn Hollow. inch perfect that pass for Peter Taylor so Tottenham's corner well, they haven't got it away very well. Clark and Morse. And it came off another Brighton player for another corner. Well, Clark was caught in the middle of a whole lot of Tottenham players there, and uh, he really didn't make much of it, and Moores couldn't turn it back himself. But they've got a corner. Brighton contesting bitterly that that was not a corner. But Clive Thomas insists that it was. So, a hoddle right, uh, Osgood on the line. Oh, what a mistake there. Oh, deflected wide of the goal. Well, it was Duncan's shot. And that looked as though it was goal bound. It deflected, presumably, off a Brighton defender. With Steele diving wildly one side, the ball just uh, clearing the other post. Miller McNabb Pratt versus Horton and Pratt wins that one Taylor now will he get it onto the left foot what a lovely chip as Morse comes in and brilliant play by Win Stanley now and it comes again dunk his header brilliant save by Eric Steele Brighton's defence, absolutely brilliant there. In the first place, they were saved by some lovely acrobatics from Graham Winstanley, the big number five. And then when Peter Taylor crossed it in again, it looked a formality for John Duncan. A really superb save by Eric Steele. Neil McNabb for Tottenham. Taylor. Oh, that's a beautiful dummy by Taylor. And a lovely little cross going in. And Lawrenson got his head to it and knocked it away for Brighton. Taylor putting in some beautiful, deceptive little crosses towards the near post. On that occasion, it didn't deceive Mark Lawrenson, who did a remarkable job for Brighton, almost on his own goal line. So John Duncan having a word with Peter Taylor there about how this corner should be taken. So, do we watch for Duncan now, I wonder? Taylor lifting it in. Duncan went a bit wider, in fact, got up there with his head. Horton was happy to let it go over for the goal kick. <laughs> Catlin. Game needing just a goal now, really, to get it going. Much better in this second half than the first. A uh, free kick very quickly taken there by Ward. It's Clark. Catlin Clark again O'Sullivan this time it's uh, Gary Williams Tony Towner 
little chip towards the near post. Miller trying to guide it back again. Oh, Clark hit it well. Great save by Barry Danes. Well, Paul Clark thought that his first appearance for Brighton was going to be marked with a goal there. He caught that beautifully. Danes was flinging himself across the goal as uh, Clark hit it, though, and turned it around for the corner. So now Brighton, after being under siege for so much of the second half, with 19 minutes of the second half gone, now spring out and get this corner. Horton with it. Fisted away again by Danes. O'Sullivan roaring across here to get there before Peter Taylor. Played back for Graham Winstanley. And an offside against Clark. Alan Mullery now <laughs> having a word, I should think, with the Tottenham bench there. Some of his old buddies down there on that Tottenham bench. If we go a little to the left, yes. Ron Henry, in fact, in the uh, coat there. Well, that was Terry Naylor's header for Neil McNabb. John Pratt. Allowed to go a long way through, Peter Taylor! Oh, superb piece of goalkeeping again by Steele. That looked a dead cert for the first Tottenham goal. He got it onto his favourite foot. Let fly, and Steele made his second brilliant save of the game. Got the biggest of keepers, 5 foot 11. My goodness, he's, uh, he's made two really superlative saves this afternoon. Now, a corner for Tottenham, a deep one towards Ian Moores. Taylor desperately trying to get it back, and that man, Steele, is there again. But you can see uh, Colin Lee now just almost ready to come on. I suppose the next time the ball goes out of play, he'll be on. And now it's Clark. Miller. Turning again, Terry Naylor there to get it away. Oh, look at the space here for Towner. Perryman was stretching and didn't get a contact. And lo and behold, it's John Duncan who gets it away to Ian Moores. Pratt supporting. Kept possession. Huddle. Taylor's right in there, so is McNabb. Angle was just a little too fine for him. And uh, indeed it's John Duncan who's coming on. Duncan put his head back and couldn't believe it. And the crowd are booing that. So it's uh, John Duncan who goes off. Just listen to the boos. When Duncan saw the number 10, he put his head back and looked in the air and couldn't believe that it was he being taken off. Well, Colin Lee is on to combine with Ian Moores. John Duncan, in fact, going straight to the dressing room. McNabb. Still McNabb. Lee with a header. A useful header. Oh, and my word, Taylor should have scored. Colin Lee's first touch of the ball. A firm, guided header into the path of Peter Taylor. And Peter Taylor couldn't do what was uh, quite required for Tottenham. Well, he'll be sore about that, but uh, probably not as sore as Colin Lee. Coming on as the sub and doing well with his very first touch. The referee, in fact, wants the corner to be taken again because just as it was about to be taken, one of those streamers came on and uh, Eric Steele said, look, hold it up, ref. Well, if there are Spurs fans throwing them, all they're doing is holding up proceedings, and Spurs have little enough time left. There's Naylor crossing it in once more. Well, it was Osgood who got up and tried to get up. Had he but known that Jimmy Holmes and Ian Moores were behind him. Ball played in nice and early. Osgood stretching, but never really getting above it.
Peter Ward. Sullivan. Williams. Ward playing it on now for Towner. Crossed in again now. Horton, I really think, was wanting Clark to come and uh, have a crack at himself. Lawrence to Ward. Turned and obstructed by Perryman. Free kick to Brighton and Hove Albion. Keeper's view as Horton takes this free kick. Win Stanley's right in there. Goal kick. A little floated uh, free kick there from Brian Horton and Graham Win Stanley, big strong defender up there. Hollow playing it forward, but that'll be uh, Steele's ball. Sullivan, Peter Ward, Perryman's there with him. It's a Brighton throw in the last minute of the game. Taunting maybe from the Brighton player, and a bit of retaliation from Steve Perryman. Ive Thomas on the scene. And Brighton with a throw with Peter O'Sullivan. It looks as though. Uh, is that a corner? Yes, a corner for Brighton. Looks as though uh, Tottenham's brilliant goal scoring. Record is ground to a halt on this occasion at any rate. Brighton, who defended gallantly, are just a matter of a few seconds away from a, a very good point indeed. Another throw to Brighton. told Steve Perryman to get the ball that's that's the sort of discipline that Clive Thomas believes in and Steve knew he had to do it it's all over it's a point for Brighton who defended well particularly in that second half and no doubt about it two really magnificent saves from Eric Steele is what kept Brighton on course for that point and even Tottenham with all their brilliant goal scoring records couldn't break it down so Brighton will be happy, Spurs not quite so happy. A goal is draw then, the fans overall I would have thought would have been fairly disappointed with what they saw. A final score at White Hart Lane. Spurs nil, Brighton nil. So no goals and the former Spurs man Alan Mullery said that he was delighted with his Brighton team and he said they knew how much it meant to me. But if it was all smiles for Alan Mullery yesterday, what about Tottenham's Keith Birkinshaw? Now, he's doing a good job at Tottenham in his own quiet way, just as he was, of course, when so much was going against the club so recently in their relegation season. And I'm prepared to bet there'll be plenty of people in the game glad to see that he's having a better time now. But how near is Keith to getting things right at Tottenham? I think things are on the way. Um, I think uh, that everybody, the players I'm talking about, myself, Pat Welton, everybody that's uh, involved on the playing side, we all know what, what we're looking for. Uh, the like playing the way... Uh, that we are playing, this is the players, um, and uh, I think it's going to bring us success eventually. Um, we've got to be patient, the crowd got a little bit impatient today. This got through to the players and we didn't play it out from the back as well as we have been doing. Mm. So, uh, you know, I would like to say to the crowd, be patient, uh, I think this is the way we've got to play it with the players that we've got, and I think that the results will come possibly. The crowd got very annoyed when you took John Duncan off. <laughs> bit of a slip up there, a little bit of a comedy of errors. Um, really? Yes, there was actually. 
Um, you mean you didn't mean to take him off? No. Um, Ian Moores, and, I, and I'll have a word with Ian anyway, I don't think he'd be too upset about it. Um, I always think that John Duncan's likely to score any time, so I would never bring him off. Uh, my instructions was that Ian should come off. And uh, <laughs> oh, whoever's pulled the uh, number out of the bag uh, has pulled the wrong number out. Uh, what are the mechanics of that, that you, that you phone for? Well, no, actually, uh, the phone wasn't going too well. They don't hear it when there's a big crowd, so Pat Welton <laughs> goes down and he says, bring Ian Moores off. And... Um, the wrong number is pulled out, and it's as simple as that. Who well, obviously pulled it out, thought Ian was wearing, well, Ian was wearing number 10, yeah. and uh, not John. Actually, it's Max a bad, bad organisation, but we, normally we're well organised here at Tottenham, I would think. When you saw the number 10 being taken out, I mean, did you jump to your seat? Did you try and put it right, or was it then too late? Well, I was actually uh, filming up in the box, but I couldn't do much about it. I could see everything going wrong down there, and uh, tearing my hair out, and nothing could happen. <laughs> But it seemed a happier time for you, because I know, you, in fact, you weathered the storm when you were relegated last year, like a good one, and, and you've come back well, and I think a lot of people in the game are pleased about that, Keith. But it's obviously a much happier way of life for you now, isn't it? Well, we're always happier, aren't we, winning? You're happier down at Gillingham when you win, don't you? <laughs> and uh, we all feel this, but I think it's the way we win sometimes, and I feel that we're winning well, and winning the way that I want us to play. Um, I wouldn't be quite so happy if we were winning games and it was a scrappy sort of effort. Mm. Um, no, I think that we're playing, starting to play the football anyway that we're all looking for. And I'm hopeful that we can uh, continue throughout the season. I'm sure the Brighton fans who are watching now would say, what did you think of Brighton? I thought uh, they're the best side that's been here this season. Really? Yeah. Um, what makes them that, do you think? Well, I think that they worked harder at us. Um, they always looked as though they could break back against us and the... And the, the appeared very dangerous when they did this. I think that they've got the best striker in the league possibly in this young lad Ward. Uh, is very quick in and around the box um, and if anybody's going to take half chances I think this lad's going to do it. Yes, they defended well too. They defended exceptionally well. Uh, we, uh, when we played it into the box, found there was always a mass of bodies in there. Um, and it was difficult to make chances. You know, we didn't make half the chances that we would do normally. And uh, the half, unfortunately, the half chances we made, we couldn't stick on. Yes. Have you seen Alan Mullery since the final whistle? I've seen him with a great big cigar. He could hardly talk it was that big. Uh, <laughs> I'll be having a word with him later. <laughs> Keith, nice to see you smiling, and thank you very much for coming up in the wind and uh, the cold to come and talk All to right, us. Thank you. Thank you. Spurs, in fact, uh, remain in second place in the second division, and the next time London fans can see them in action, of course, is on Tuesday night for a testimonial for the Arsenal skipper, Pat Rice. That's Arsenal against Spurs at Highbury on Tuesday night, kick-off 7.30, and what a bumper night that looks likely to be now for Pat.